Καλωσορίζουμε στη Μαδουρή, το νησί όπου έζησε και δημιούργησε ο ποιητής Αριστοτέλης Βαλαωρίτης. Ένας άλλος μεγάλος λευκαδίτης ποιητής, ο Άγγελος Σικελιανός, ύμνησε με τα δικά του λόγια το νησί που τον γέννησε. Νησί, αβασίλευτη στο πέλα ο δόξα, οριζωμένο στο πολύβοο διάστημα και στου ομήρου το στίχο λουσμένο, βυθισμένο στον ύμνο. Lefkada, the island of the great poets. A blue dream, tied with everlasting green. A traveling ship that shapes its own course in the passing of time. There are two sides to the island's visage, both of them very impressive. One is green, sinuous, cosmopolitan. The other bright white, embracing the sea, with unique sandy beaches, the best of their kind in the Mediterranean Sea. mostly covered by catch that goes all the way down to the sea. There are plenty of fountain heads, some of them form into waterfalls. Archaeological Museum of Lefkada. Archaeological excavations brought important gleanings to light. They were found in various locations all over the island. The German archaeologist Wilhelm Derpfeldt, who has also worked on the Trojan excavation, 
had an important point to make. Basing his arguments on Homer and the gleanings of his excavations, he sustained that Lefkava is the island that Homer calls Ithaca. who support his theory, although his work wasn't completed. He died in 1940 and now rests in Levkada, near Nivri, where he spent most of his life. The old capital of the island was called Nirikos. In the 7th century BC, the island was occupied by the Corinthians, who needed to establish a supportive shelter on the road to Italy and the Adriatic. That's when the channel was opened and the city of Lefkada was founded near the channel. The first thing that catches your eye is the imposing Venetian castle of Aia Mavra, named after the city, so called during the Venetian occupation. It was constructed in the 14th century by Ioannis Orsini. It's a significant example in the field of fortification art. Franks, Venetians, Turks, French, Russians had occupied the island. Finally, in 1810, the English incorporated the island into the United Nations of the Ionian Islands as a self-governed nation under the English shield. In 1864, the English withdrew, and the island became part of Greece. The Lefkava Philharmonic Orchestra was established 150 years ago, headed by the great Greek poet Aristoteles Valoritis. In 1896, it participated in the Olympic Games in Athens and was awarded with the gold medal. Today, the Lefkava Philharmonic Orchestra carries on its historical musical tradition in the city of Lefkava that preserves its picturesqueness. Lefkavian serenades can still be heard in traditional taverns. Guitars and mandolins animate the Ionian tradition, reminding the people of the Venetian influence. Maria Callas was also seduced by the long-standing Lefkavian musical tradition. In 1964, she, together with Aristoteles Onassis, were present in the city's central square to attend a musical. It was an unforgettable evening for all Lefkavian attendees, as the famous opera diva, accompanied by young Kyriakos Svetsas at the pianoforte, charmed the audience, offering to them one of the most glittering moments in her career.
To a visitor, Takis Katapodis is just a local butcher. However, to the local people, he is the man who, for many decades, uninterruptedly works towards a unique target. The establishment of the Lefkavian Phonograph Museum. It is a small space, filled with significant heirlooms about the island's history that reflects both the four-time devotion and the imaginative spirit of its creator. Lefkava holds a unique world record. In 1993, the Haramoglius Library was recorded in the Guinness Book of Records. The Haramoglius Library has been the life work of its establisher, Telis Haramoglis. It's the only existing library holding 40,000 titles and over 80,000 topics about the island of Lefkava. In 1850, Lefkavius Hearn was born here. His father was an Irish officer serving in the English army. His mother was Greek. After studying in Ireland and England, Lefkavius Hearn worked as a journalist in the USA. In 1890, he travelled to Japan and decided to stay there. He learned Japanese and to his death in 1904, he worked systematically in order to familiarize Western society with Japanese literature and vice versa. He has accomplished a work of enormous impact. Many Japanese visit Lefkava, homeland of Yakumi Kuizumi, as he's known in Japan. Lefkavius Hearn has been constantly thinking of Lefkava. Living in faraway Japan, he wrote about his birthplace. Lefkava, where the sun constantly shines, where the indigo sea washes the coasts of olive and pine trees. On St. Nicholas Island stands a historic chapel in the same place where the Temple of Aphrodite once stood. This is where a well-known Greek poet lived for a while, Angelos Sikelianos. In this town, where from the ancient times he made the presence and the creation of his soul, the great pneumatic soul of our patrimony, the Angelos Sikelianos. This που αμέσως μετά το γάμο του με την Αμερικανίδα Εύα Πάλμερ και το μικρό του γιο τον Γλάφκο έφτασε σε αυτό το χώρο, αγκυροβόλησε και ταυτόχρονα η φυσική δημιουργία, η καθαρότητα του τοπίου, η απλότητα και η απεραντοσύνη της θάλασσας μαζί με την αγιότητα του χώρου του έδωσαν τα περήφανα πνευματικά ανοίγματα αλλά και τα μοναδικά φτερουγίσματα για να γίνει ο μεγάλος διδάχος τόσο της ρομνιοσύνης όσο και γενικότερα να σε λαγίσει προς την αιωνιότητα. The Pringiponisa of Lefkada where the island of Scorpios lies, the island of Aristoteles Onassis, who transformed it into an earthly heaven. Its view is particularly impressive if one looks at it from the mountain opposite. Right in front of us are the evergreen islands, Prinkiponisa, Mavuri, Scorpios, Sparti and Meganisi.
This enchanting area where the blue of the sea and the green of the fields dominate has been, according to Dirpfelt, the kingdom of Ulysses. More and more visitors from all around the world are traveling down the same courses today and get to discover the natural beauties of the island. We, what fervor, what passion. foreland of Lefkata. This is where the image stunts the eye and the legend stirs the soul. The lighthouse is built on the rock, 60 meters above the sea surface. The temple of Apollo, known as the Lefkata Apollon, used to stand on the same spot. The rock is called the Rock of the Lady. According to tradition, the name Lady is based on the poet Sapfo, who was born in Lesbos in the middle of the 7th century BC. Let down by her love for Faunas, Sapfo jumped down Apollo's rock. The legend survived to the most recent years and inspired the poet Lord Byron, who wrote about Sapfo's tragic end. Darksome Sapfo, I wonder, couldn't your immortal verses save your bosom that was soppy with the immortal fire? Panagia of Lachernon that stands in the olive groves of Lefkava. This is where the poet Ioannis Sambelius and the Greek chieftains swore to fight against the Turks in February 1821.
the monastery of Panagia Fanoromeni, patron of Levkava. The first traces of Christianity on the island lead to Pavlos the Apostle when he disembarked on the beach just under the monastery where the temple of Artemis the Levkavian once stood. In the centre of the island stands the traditional village of Karya. The custom of the traditional Levkavian wedding is being revived every August. Karya is mainly well known for its famous Karsanikan embroideries. Γεννήθηκα και ήξερα και δάω. Ε, και δάγανε όλες οι γυναίκες. Σε όλα τα σπίτια ήταν κόφαμε και έντοιμα. Στο σχολείο το κάναμε χειροτεχνία. Στα σπίτια όλα και δάγανε, εμείς όλες οι ηλικίες και παραπάνω και παρακάτω, εμάθαμε να ξέρουμε την Πελωνιά. Ε, προσπαθήσαμε να τη διαδώσουμε και στα παιδιά μας και στα γόνια μας και θα χαρώ πολύ έστω και πεθαμένη να, να μην η Βελωνιά αυτή γιατί είναι από τις λίγες που υπάρχουν. Δεν νομίζω να υπάρχει άλλη Βελωνιά στον κόσμο σαν την Καρσάνη. Καρσάνη τη λέγεται. Αλλά Λόγω που ξαπλώθηκε σε όλα τα χωριά της Λευκάδος, τη λένε Λευκαδίτη. The first international folklore festival of Greece took place in Lefkave in 1955. Since then, young people from all over the world meet here every year to present their traditional dances and send everywhere a message of companionship and peace. Levkava, 40 kilometers of beaches in the vast blue of the Ionian Sea. Είναι λευκή η κόρη, λευκή σαν τους αφρούς, κοιμάται και ξυπνάει τους αναστεναγμούς. Πλαγιάζει με το κύμα, μέσα στις κρυφές πηγές, σαν τη λευκάδα κόρη δεν είδατε ποτέ. It's the time when the sun bids farewell to the island of the great poets, giving it away to the immensity of the sea. The time when Apollo's chariot will follow the road to the country of the rising sun, carrying Lefkada's messages to far away Japan. The murmur of the sea overflows in my veins. It tumbles my island in the sea. Inside me thunders the rock of Lefkata. On it grinds like a millstone the sun. <laughs> <laughs> 